everybody, it is episode 2.3 of Thursday Night Throwdown, and my special guest is ringleader of the DWO, Koje, who is filling in for Casey Andrews, because he was on top down this week for the first time in a while. Big battle with Jordy Taylor, of course, we'll get to that later. Justin Sider was on the show, as you saw, lots of cameos, some paid for, some for free. Hey, Marty Sugar. You looking at the real bird man, and you done piss me off, Jack. Shut up and sit down. Justin Sider had a comment about the voting system, and you know what, champ? You could have come to me first, but that's not how wrestling works. We are going to change up the voting just to make you feel better, make everybody else feel better. 60% of the fan vote will count towards your final tally, 20% each for the two judges, and hopefully that's fair enough for you, Justin Sider. Anyway, Kojay. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. At least one of us is happy you're here. Well, that's all that matters. To me, that's all that matters. All right. Well, that's what counts. No, I got to say, great editing on the show interruptions, but please, the floor is yours. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, um, everybody's had something to say about our appearance so far, mm -hmm. and whether we like it or not, and most of the time it's not. We're here. We're not going anywhere. Bring your A-game. Talk about A game right out of the gate this week. Jack Pride and Sky. Now, I personally think Jack Pride should be the internet champion right now. What do you say? I have to agree. I watched last week. My vote went to uh, went to Jack Pride. The DWO doesn't vote, but if I did, it would go to Jack Pride. Sorry, Justin. Going on a great show. It was a great battle. Now, talking you? about great battles, Jack Pride and Sky. Give us some pointers. Give us your thoughts on Jack Pride real quick here. I think Jack Pride spent too much time talking about his battle with Justin. I think he didn't take enough time to pay respect to his opponent, to Sky. And I think he, when he complained about you know, not having enough to respect for Justin because Justin took a week off, I don't respect Jack Pride. He was there to fight Sky, not complain that Justin took a break. So, I give him a three. Out of ten? Out of ten. Wow! You're there to do a job. All right, we do not agree. I feel like Jack's getting better every week and running on all cinders. This one gave me chills. It was very good. I don't deny that maybe he could have focused more, um, but I mean, it's such a such a light of such a controversial week. Uh, I completely on the opposite side. I gave it nine and a half. I thought it was one of the best promos we've had, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but that's why we have these votes, right? You're uh, you're welcome to give your opinion, uh, Sky. Talk to me about Sky. I like Sky. Her audio was much better this week. 100%. Good job, Sky. Um, you know, she's got a much different take than everybody else and anything we've seen, and she keeps mixing it up. It's getting better, and she's getting stronger and more confident. Uh, I was really impressed, so I gave her a six. Nice. I, uh, Sky's a child prodigy. The fact that she's picked this up so fast, uh, you actual workers need to take note because a 15-year-old girl is wiping the floor with most of you right now. Uh, I felt, I, you you were a strict judge. I felt this is a legit match of your candidate for season two. This is one of the best promo battles I've ever seen one-on-one. -on -one. I loved where Sky's character is going. I gave her a nine. I barely gave Jack the win, 9.5 to nine. You gave it to Sky, six to three. Tough guy over here, and I'm supposedly the bad guy in the Okanagan. Sky's would have been higher, but when she started ripping the pictures of her former con competitors, Dopes already did that. Ah, here we go. So, Here we go. There we go. Do your homework. All right. Jeff Christie and Lance Skulls. Now Lance Skulls demanded a match with Jeff Christie, and then of course we found out why. Ulterior motives. Let's get to Jeff Christie first. Shoot. You know, as uh, one half of team security, Jeff has come a long way. Mm -hmm. He's done very well. He's far more confident. Um, yeah, I have really nothing negative to say about the work that he did this week. He did a great job, and he's building. He's getting stronger. I gave him a solid six. Yeah, I, uh, I felt he needed to be tightened up, but I like the, I don't care why you called me out. That's, that's like a fight situation. I don't care why you called me out, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat you up. And the welcome to 2020 bit was kind of funny. And uh, I love when he said, well, I will do what the fans want. Like, I like that he acknowledged that he's he's in the undercard right now, but if he works hard enough, he may get better. Uh, I gave him a 7 out of 10. It is one of his more solid promos. It was an excellent delivery as compared to even the last show when he forgot the name of the company. But, you know, these things happen. 
Uh, Lance Gulls. Um, You know what, I thought he was no better or worse than we've seen from him so far. I thought it was very much on the level of what we expect from him, and when you're going to call someone out, you need to be better than that. But out of experience alone, I gave him a 7. Fair. I liked how he built up Jeff that uh, he's getting better, and not only has he gotten better, but then he j tried to corrupt our head of security and use him, and I like the fact that he plugged August 15th which he then plugged later in the show as well, or earlier in the show. The fact that Lance Skulls, as much as I can't stand him, does a great job of plugging Big West, I have to give him his due. And it was solid. We've got a lot of guys right now that I think are just solid promos. And yeah, if they want to move up the ladder, they need to become more than just consistently good. There's a couple of those in the main event. I gave him an eight, so... Match number three, this was one of the big ones. Jordy Taylor, the OGB, has invaded the top down as well as everyone else and their dog has invaded the top down. But you know what? He's coming at it. He has burst on the scene in Big West after having not been here for years. Jordy Taylor, Casey Andrews demanded this challenge. He wanted to face him right at the bat, just like he wanted to face Sebastian Wolf. Casey Andrews stepped up to the plate. Talk about Jordy Taylor, please. Jordy Taylor is not somebody that um, you know, I expect a lot of people to go challenging. He's a tough competitor. He came in very smooth, very structured. It's really an outline of what I think a promo should be. Mm -hmm. And he did a phenomenal job. Uh, so well, in fact, that I gave him a nine. Nice. I said that he was confident and intense, and he has a patented. He's almost like he used to be a prize fighter, and he has a boxer-type delivery. The way he speaks, he's kind of like jab, jab, boom. And I like it. Excellent talk down intro. Uh, I gave him an 8, but we're on the same page. Uh, Casey Anders, what do you think? I, get, I gotta go to the same thing I went with Skulls. It was, again, what I expect from Casey Anders. Yep. No better, no worse. It was a really solid effort. Um, one thing is I didn't like the, um, the ambiance of where he did the promo itself. It looked like he was just sitting in front of his TV. It looked like an episode of Roseanne was going on. So, <laughs> sorry. I had, to, uh, I had to, he dropped a couple of points because of that, and I gave him a 7. Nice. I said uh, I like Casey's history lesson, and I like that he was spitting facts and put Jordy over strong. And that's what we've been talking about is that if this was a fight, you don't want to call your opponent a loser, which he did not. He tried to build a faction. The hairline was a cheap shot, but that's vintage Casey Anders. Uh, I gave him an 8. I, I called it a draw. You have Jordy ahead. We'll see what the fans say on comes to our main event, our fatal four-way, Casey Peak, Destro the Eskimofo, JJ Bounty, and Sleazy Steve, 210 to Victory Station because JJ Bounty insisted he could not cut a promo in two minutes. He needed at least two minutes and ten seconds. He was being snide, so I called his bluff. Who won out here? Did he did he answer the challenge? We'll get to that in a sec. First up, Casey Peak, the other half of Team Security. Same as Jeff Christie, he's come a long way. Yep. He's far more confident than he was coming in. His audio is, again, much better. Just along the sky, they, he did a great job with that. Um, he, he's probably, in my opinion, had the second best promo out of all of them, and I have reasons for that. But, uh, you know, Casey, you did a great job. You're definitely building. Kick it up another notch. Just keep it getting better every week. Six. I gave him a seven, the same idea. I like that he put everybody over. I like that I like the he put everyone over, but he also had some comments like Pit Vipers ain't gonna save you. You know, no matter how north you go, Des, you can't escape me, and then the new sheriff in town. It wasn't it was a reference to Millennium Pro, which a lot of people here won't get, but sometimes those insider jokes work, sometimes they don't. Seven out of ten, Casey's doing well to take that next step. Like we said, he's gonna move a little bit harder. Des. Talk about Des. I love Des. Des and I, we're, we're, uh, we go way back now, but if you're gonna do a selfie style promo, it needs to be dramatic. Mm -hmm. And it, he lost so much credibility for that because he's been so much better. Mm -hmm. I thought just the whole promo in itself, its delivery, its impact, he's done a lot better in the past. So much in fact that I consider this a huge step back for you guys. I'm gonna give you four. Wow. And you gave Casey what? Six. Okay. Let's keep track this time. All right, I said that Des, I liked his references. He made references for everybody. He had the cute little Sting reference with not mentioning Sting. I like that. And the burger joke with J.J. Bounty was fun. And it's not too inside. 
Sometimes these insider comics, if, you're, if you remember Kevin Nash in the actual NWO, you know, the original, and Kevin Nash would make snide comments, and people are like, what are you talking about? If it doesn't make any sense, it's just doing it to pop himself, but these are actually going to pop everybody. And uh, he, he put over Casey's physique, because in reality, Casey looks good. And you know, he, does, he does. Yeah, he's come a long way. For a guy who wants to train to be a wrestler, he looks like a wrestler. And, but unlike a lot of guys that have good builds, he can actually cut promos too. So, I mean, that's amazing. Uh, Dez had great confidence. Uh, it wasn't his best promo, but I said he's really just gotten, again, consistency, which is good. But how do you take the next step? I gave it an 8, but we'll continue on here. JJ Bounty. Tell me what you wanted. Um, I thought it was really funny. I also think that funny was not the point. You were there to compete against three other competitors who you showed absolutely no respect to by turning it into a Marty Sugar shoot with a appearance from Coco Beware that in his closet that I had no idea who the hell he was. So I first thought it was Devon Dudley, and I was like, why two. is Devon Dudley? Man? And then I was like, oh, Bird, right? Coco. But uh, yeah, sorry, JJ, it was a really strong effort, and in most cases, this would have been all right. But since you didn't even give your competitors the respect they deserve for showing up and being there, you get a four. And that's fair. I will say this. This is where it gets ugly. I waited 14 hours past deadline, JJ Bounty, for a shaky promo with a bad cameo from Coco Beware in his closet. And somehow he hates my guts. Kiss my ass, Coco Beware. I have been defending you since day one. You are the toughest guys in the Memphis scene. You are an underrated Hall of Famer. You're going to talk smack to me in your closet. However, I like JJ's Marty Sugar mockery. I think it's hilarious. I think it's great. I love how he's, I've morphed into Tim Flowers somehow. That I'm this miserable guy that doesn't like editing and doesn't like gimmicks. I don't know when that ever happened. I don't know where you've got this idea, JJ. You're batshit crazy. And I'll edit that later. Here's the other thing. I never would have dissed the bird. I think Crackers is the best part of the promo. He was the only thing that popped me and he was the only one worth listening to the entire time. I was being super generous and I changed my mind after I went on a tirade. Three. A tap. Probably not going to count your vote for this one because you're probably not going to be fair. But I think I was Sleazy really Steve. Fair. You know what? When we found Sleazy Steve, and offered to bring him into the DWO. He was a wreck. He was a mess. Hey, you can say what you will, but he's come back stronger than ever. And all he needed was some people there to show him some support and let him know that he wasn't by himself in this. And now he's come back stronger and sleazier than ever. And I was really proud of him because of this week, specifically, he was the strongest promo. In my opinion, he stuck to the point. As far as this competition was concerned, he did the best job out of all three of them. So Sleazy, I'm giving you an eight. That was fair. What would have made it a 10? What would have made it a 10? Mm -hmm. Had it just been even stronger. And More two clown it. circus editing? No, not necessarily. He, again, you want to know why? He lost two points because he didn't evolve either. He, he yeah. kind of co you know, coasted along, but he's back to how he was, mm -hmm. which is a step forward. Yep. But he can do better. I said similar. Good timing, good attitude in there. I uh, put all his foes over. Could have been tightened up. Uh, I didn't like the diss of Casey's catchphrase. There's no point for that because if we dissed everything in wrestling that wasn't original, that would be everything. No one would do anything ever. Nothing is original in pro wrestling and hasn't been for 50 years at least. Um, the rest, though, I gave him seven and a half. Uh, again, consistency, but is that enough to make you the champ? I don't believe so. say this though as far as promo skills as the actual wrestler here in the room just because it's a four-way dance you don't have to talk about four people the fact that it was 210 to victory station was mostly a rib on JJ Bounty there's not a single one of you that needed two minutes and ten seconds to get over the fact that you're in a fatal four-way and why you are the best to win the fatal four -way. that whole thing could have been done collectively between the four of you in four minutes tops and that's an excellent point because, you know, I've said a few times people didn't, you know, show their competitors the respect I thought they deserved, but that doesn't mean that they all have to be acknowledged, you know? Just stick to the point. And your obsession with me being bad management and not having the guts to name me by name isn't going to help you with your promos. 
unless you're doing a career suicide video like Jace Darcy. But then if that's what you're up to, by all means go ahead and we'll see you somewhere else. I want to thank my guest, Koji, today. You weren't as big of a pain in the butt as I thought you might be. And I hear you brought dessert, so hit the credits. Hmm, <laughs> hmm.